say that kind of slow. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter uh, 17. Verse uh, verse one, Bible says, and and after six days, uh, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his his brother, and bringeth them into an high mountain apart. Uh, he's he's always going apart, Amen. Uh, away is, you know, we we live in a time of social media where we're always trying to get more closer. <laughs> You know, but Jesus Jesus was always coming apart, you know, away, amen. Uh, and he took uh, Peter, he took James, and took John uh, with him here. So it's, it's obvious that uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, uh, with Jesus, the four of those guys are alone, amen. Uh, there, there's not other people with them, amen. Uh, they're alone. And uh, the other disciples uh, have been left as they were, were in the garden. But uh, this is not a, a lone incident in the scripture. Amen. They uh, went to the garden, uh, just, just these three. And, of course, I don't really know why. I, you know, that. so don't ask me how come, but... Uh, I could only speculate uh, why that he would take these these three guys with him, uh, Peter, James, and John. Uh, maybe they were the closest to Christ, uh, as far as we know. Maybe you know. Uh, uh, so again, you know, I'm just you know speculating there, you know. Coming up with some spiritual uh, understanding, you know, but you know, there on, on that of how come that he, he would take these guys with him and not the others, because uh, you know, I, I think maybe all of them would have been happy to have seen all that, right? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be like, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, you know, something spectacular would happen, right? And it, then then I I only have Brother Lee, or, or Brother Lee would only have me, and then everybody else gets left out. You know, man, I'm telling you, that this, you know, why he would pick just them three and all the rest of them, I, I don't really have a clue on that, but just uh, right off the tongue, I'd probably say that maybe they're closest. Uh, and maybe using these three uh, guys and seeing what it would that they would see on, on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Matthew 17 and also Mark uh, relates this and also Luke also relates this and uh, maybe the fewer folk that saw this, amen, is the less that it will be distorted, I, you know, or so, right? Uh, and so uh, they, they had to sit on it. Though what they saw there, they had to they had to keep it quiet. They had to sit on it. Uh, what they saw there in Matthew 17 until after the resurrection. I mean they they couldn't tell anybody, right? And so you know, just me speaking here, that would be so hard for me to do. Amen. I mean. If, like for instance, when the Lord heals somebody, I don't know about you guys, but I get excited about it. And I'm like, you hoo look at here. You know, look what God did. You know, and God did, did something great. Look at, look at here. Look at here. You know, bring, bring the news crew. Bring anybody else. This fella just got healed. Amen. I, I would get so excited. Man, there's no way I could keep my mouth shut, right? And, Especially, man, ma'am, you know, this This would have been something that if I had to go through this, that they went through, and Jesus said, keep your mouth shut. Uh, soon as I got to the bottom of the mountain, I, I, I'd be skipping, hopping, and jumping, 
Whoo, look there. You know, I mean, I'd be like, guys, look at here. You know, I've been doing dancing, and, 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 and man, he transfigured. <laughs> you know, don't let this body fool y'all, you know. No, no, look. I mean, we, we just saw him transfigured. Huh. Yeah, I mean, his clothes. Don't let them clothes fool you. Amen. Man is shown with great light, great light on his face. Then shine, we saw her right through him. Man, I, man, I, I, I be spilling everything at the bottom of the mountain, you know? And uh, I, I don't think that, that the Lord would probably get really mad at me about it. He might have, I don't know. But uh, I don't think I could have kept it quiet. I think I would have had to say something, <laughs> right? And uh, But they couldn't, amen? They were under a gag order, you, you know? And, and, and so they, they uh, uh, couldn't share what they had experienced on the mount until after the resurrection. I don't know why he took Peter, James, and John, but I know this, he did. He took them, amen? And uh, verse 2 says, and was transfigured. Amen? Verse 2 says, and was transfigured before them. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff there. It was transfigured before them. Luke uh, relates this that that he relates that it happened while he was praying. While he was praying. Now, a good question is why he took these three, but also why did they have to experience this? Amen. Now, I, I don't I don't know that that he was absolutely praying for this to happen. Uh, I don't have any idea on that one either. But you know, that's that's just one of those questions. That you have to ask the Lord, amen, when you get to heaven. But Luke relates in chapter 9 that while that he was praying, that he was changed or that uh, he was transfigured. Amen? He was transfigured. He, he went from something of what he was to something that was completely different to what he was. He was transfigured. He was changed. Amen? Luke also relates uh, Peter, James, and John. Uh, I don't know <clears throat> when this happened, but Luke says that they went to sleep. Went to sleep. Now, I have no clue of when that they went to sleep. Maybe they went to sleep while that he, he was praying before the transfiguration. Because I can't really imagine anyone going to sleep while all this is going on. You know, I, I can't, you know, something real big happening there. And, uh, and they just don't fall asleep. No, but uh, but they, they did go to sleep. Amen. They did go to sleep. And it says here in verse, verse 2, it says, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light was white as the light. And uh, so basically what that means is is that they could see right through the Lord. Amen? They could see right through him. He was translucent. Amen? Now I, I can't really explain that term to you. Amen? Uh, or can't really ex explain it, but they could see light. Amen? Amen? They can see light. Amen. Even, even the Lord's clothes, Luke tells us, shone brightly. Amen. Uh, as did his face, just like the sun. So, all this is uh, going on here. And, uh, you know, guys, I, I can't imagine this. But yet it gets better. I mean, stick a fork in me. I mean, I'll be like, I'm done. <laughs> That's a, oh, wow, right? And then verse verse, uh, verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto, unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Amen? Pr pretty cool stuff, right? I mean, it's, I mean, that's breaking all the laws of physics. That's breaking all of the laws, period. You know, Jesus, I mean, man, you know, just he's, he's translucent. Uh, his, his, his body, his, his clothes is shining, his face is shining, his see light through him, and you know, and then all of a sudden here come 
How come uh, Moses has been dead for 1,400 years and then Elias has been dead for over 900 years at that time? And so, uh, now, guys, that, that would be an awakening, amen, to wake up to and boom. They, you know, you're seeing that and you're watching that. And that's Jesus. His face is shining so bright, you know. And then, then he's sitting there talking to uh, uh, Moses and, uh, and, and Elias, uh, uh, you know, just talking to him, you know, have, holding a conversation with him. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, and in fact, actually in Luke chapter 9, it gives you the idea that they were asleep and awakened to these two visitors there on the mount. Amen. So there were four of them, and now there's two more of them. Four went to six to two more. Amen. It had had uh, six of them there, and uh, and uh, just I mean, just thinking about this has always amazed me. It's always amazed me. Just thinking about you know how that all that would look, and I mean, I don't even know how they would make that look in a movie. I I know they got things out today that would probably be pretty pretty cool, uh, you know, possible scenarios, but. Uh, but I mean, just uh, being there, you know, amen, uh, and and seeing this and witnessing this, and man, what power, you know, that was there. And I, I mean, just think about now, and goosebumps are you know all over my arms, you know, and my back, you know. But I, I'm I'm just saying that uh, that uh, just this was pretty exciting. It was a, a surreal moment. It was an awesome moment, amen. It was one of those uh, uh, moments that, well, have, have you know, have, have you ever been in a moment where that the man is just like a, a serene moment, and then somebody says something, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody just says something, just I mean, just you know, everybody just snapped out of it, yeah, almost, you know, and uh, or just you know, just uh, uh, you know, just kind of change, you know, I know I've been in like a service, you know, when when just somebody would just cough, you know, and, you know, one of them odd coughs, you know, just, you know, and, and uh, man, then I, all of a sudden, you know, it just seemed like that everything just kind of mellowed down, you know, I mean, it just, it just quenched everything, you know, and, uh, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you, if there was ever a time to say nothing, and to be quiet, you know, to watch what, I, I believe that this would have been the time right here, amen? Uh, I know I've been in a couple of situations to when I had said something that I thought was pretty profound. I said something, I thought, man, this, and, and I, I really didn't have to speak, I just spoke because I was uncomfortable, you know? And I, I wish for a million times over that I kept my mouth shut, you know, amen? And I, 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 I mean, I shouldn't have said nothing. I, I should have just been quiet and just just breathed in the moment and just enjoyed the moment, you know. And, uh, uh, man, this was a time, though, that they should have kept their mouth shut. Amen. But Peter said in verse 4, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, now keep in mind all this is going on, right? Then Peter answered Jesus and said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Amen? Of course, obviously, we'd all say duh, right? But uh, then he said, in verse 4, he said, then Peter, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Amen? Let's make three of them. One for you, one for Moses, one, one for Elias. And verse 5 says, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Amen? Now, I've got no doubt in my mind what that was, that cloud was. I have no doubt in my mind that that was the glory of God that was there. That was the Shekinah glory that was there. Amen? Why yet spake, 
Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Guys, that was the glory of God. God's Shekinah glory, amen. The same, the same cloud that filled the holies of holies. That was the same cloud that filled the, the, the uh, temple in Solomon's day. That was the same cloud that covered Moses when he was in the cleft of the rock, amen. And the Bible says that his face did shone, amen. And, and uh, I, I mean, it's the same cloud, guys. The same cloud. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, folks, guys, church, listen to me. It would have been something to have been there. I'm going to be honest, man. It would have been something. One, to see Jesus transfigured. Amazing. That would have been amazing. Completely amazing. To see that. One, to see Moses and Elias. To actually see them. Moses and Elias. Wow, you know? Right? And one, to see the Shekinah cloud of God, the glory of God. Ooh, man, just think about that, guys. To see the Shekinah glory of God and to be enveloped. By that cloud, amen. And now the very voice of God is ringing in your ears. Man, you talk about surround sound. I mean, you're in that cloud. And the voice of God is in that cloud. And man, you talk about surround sound. Ooh, amen. I mean, it's just like you're, you're just engrossed by that voice. Just total voice of God speaking. And you heard it, and it rung in your body, the cloud. Amen, somebody. Amen. That voice, amen, that enveloped them, that cloud that enveloped them, guys. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. I mean, Moses is important. Not really. Uh, Elias is important, amen, not really. They're, they're, they're not the, uh, the main cog of the wheel, amen. Jesus was the main cog of the wheel, amen. And, man, how, how many times do, do we do that? We, we put uh, pastors up on the pedestal. We put preachers up on the pedestal. We put somebody that we like up on the pedestal. We put our moms and dads, whatever, up on that pedestal. Oh, let's hear you heal. No, guys, amen. Let's, uh, let's hear Christ. Amen. Look there at verse number 6. It says that when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And it should have been. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Then that's when they should got some courage and uh, not been afraid. And then verse 8 says, And when they had lifted up their eyes and saw no man save Jesus only. Boy, I tell you what, I like that one. Not, not as a oneness doctrine, though. Amen. Not talking about as a oneness doctrine there, but as what that we should really see Jesus only as. Amen. What we should only be, you know, I kind of got my heart broke today. I, I was reading some uh, comments and one, one of my Friends, you know, was like, uh, uh, I guess he got disappointed in, in people, and he, he was writing, man, I wish I had somebody in, in my corner. Uh, said all these fake phonies, you know, fake people, amen? And, uh, you know, I, I can I can relate, amen, uh, about not wanting fakes around, but guys, also, man, if we could just get our eyes off of man, and get them on Christ? Boy, that would solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? That would solve a lot of fear, wouldn't it? That would stop a lot of people from getting disappointed, wouldn't it? Amen? Oh, I'm disappointed in that old pastor love. I tell you what, he, he did, did, did y'all see what he did? Uh, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to get out of I'm going to lay my faith down. Well, if I, if I was the author and finisher of your faith, I'd say, amen. Amen? I, I would say, right on, brother. 
Amen. Uh, lay your faith down. But I'm not the author and the finisher of your faith. Jesus Christ is. Amen. And uh, man, I'm, I'm, you know, pe people get disappointed at, 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 at man. And it, it affects their, their whole, oh boy, look what Jimmy Swaggart did. You know, bless God. I'm just so down and out, just so discouraged. Well, big whoopee doo. I mean, this is a whoopee doo, but I'm just saying, amen. You you got to to snap out, raise your eyes, and see no man but Jesus. Amen. I'm, I'm not saying that let him off the hook, you know, but I am saying this. Uh you you won't be you won't be as disappointed in Jesus Christ as you will be in man. Man will disappoint you. Guys, listen. I've said it before. I've said it a hundred million more times that I will fail you. Amen. I will disappoint. And I, th I think, you know, pretty much most of us have been around long enough to know that I'm not just saying that. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it because it's true. Amen. I, I, I will disappoint you. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to take myself 